Nokia Event Driven Automation, or EDA for short, is an infrastructure automation platform with a single stated goal, human error zero. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, based on recent reporting, uh, over two thirds of outages within infrastructure are caused by human and technology errors. Now, what this means and how we've solved for this in the past is stagnation. We deploy something once, it works, we never touch it again. But we live in a world now where all of the other components of our infrastructure have moved to a very, very dynamic model. Networking in particular is the last holdout. Nokia EDA, its main goal is to move networking to being kind of in this holy grail, this utopia of automation where I can touch my network without fear that it's going to be fragile. That is the fundamental problem we're trying to solve here. I think one of the key differences when we think about intent-based networking or intent-based automation in general versus kind of your classic style is one of what are your inputs to the system. So in your classic model, what we've been doing for kind of the last two decades is my inputs to the system are basically configuration snippets. That's kind of a way to think of it. And we build a merged configuration off box and we eventually push it down to the box. But you're dealing with device primitives, so you become an expert on those device primitives. In the intent side of the world, it's more of a top-down approach. So we describe business outcomes. We want to connect these two endpoints and apply some policy that means that they can talk to each other and they can't talk to other things. This is kind of the big shift with intent-based automation, one that it's kind of business outcomes versus kind of that bottom-up configuration approach. The other key aspect to intent-based automation is one of uh, closed-loop automation. So when I set something, I can't guarantee that it's always going to stay set, especially in a world where we have multiple controllers talking to these different devices. We have operations teams wanting to come in and make changes to these devices potentially out of band of our controllers. So being able to handle that configuration drift in a way that it doesn't get unmanageable over time is another key component to intent-based automation. And the general outcome here is one that you get uh, more agility in deploying services. You no longer need to be an expert on, on kind of how things work. You just need to know what you want to do. That's kind of the really, really, really big shift here. Promotes agility, promotes reliability, all those key things that we want to see in kind of modern automation platforms. I think the biggest business benefit of using a platform like EDA is one of business agility without compromising reliability. Uh, based on recent reports from Uptime Intelligence, over two-thirds of outages in our infrastructure are caused by humans touching our infrastructure. So what that means is we avoid humans touching our infrastructure, but they're the ones telling it that it needs to evolve over time. This is kind of the key benefit, allowing your infrastructure to evolve as the business evolves, keeping it kind of nice and flexible and agile to adopt new business requirements as they appear. Generative AI is really, really interesting when we start thinking around how humans start interacting or continue to interact with machines. Specifically in uh, Nokia EDA, we really wanted an operations team to be able to ask natural language, very nuanced questions around how their infrastructure is operating. So I think as an operations team, being able to get to an answer quicker is kind of the fundamental thing from a purely operations standpoint that generative AI helps us with. Specifically in EDA, we want to be able to answer questions like, show me all processes in my entire infrastructure sorted by memory usage. These are the kind of queries that operations teams love, the idea that you can monitor memory usage, CPU usage, infrastructure-wide, without having to deal with the semantics of how do you collect that data, how do you present it. The idea that you can answer these questions live in real time using streaming telemetry, I think unlocks a powerhouse of information for our operations teams. Network automation has indeed been around for many, many years, but really when you think about its focus, it's really been focused on device bring up and initial provisioning of devices. Unfortunately, and the reality is that covers about the first six months of that device's lifetime. These devices are sitting in our infrastructure for five, six, seven, or more years, and the, the ongoing maintenance of that device typically hasn't had a good automation story. So I think the big shift in EDA is starting to design around the operations teams and some of the, 
tasks they have to complete day to day that are the ones that are error prone. At the end of the day, deploying a new service through some OSS system is almost a solved problem at this point in time. It's when I do an upgrade. It's when I make a routing policy change. And it's where a human is the one driving these changes after the thing has been operating for many, many years that things start to become more fragile. So an operations first approach to automation is a big shift. If we look at other tools in the industry today, there's almost this massive divide you see between the configuration side of the world and the set of tools that are there and the state side of the world, the operations side of the world and the tools available there. What we've seen is automation has really focused on configuration and I think that is kind of fundamentally flawed and when we look at EDA, we really wanted to try and solve for the state side. So part of this is moving towards these declarative abstractions. So I shouldn't have to explain to the controller how to deploy an eVPN service. I should just tell it, I want you to connect this point to this point. The complexity of how it does that is up to the controller. At the end of the day, it's the one with all the smarts. That's kind of how things have worked for a little while. But what happens when I now need to debug that service? Well, I'm now dealing with device primitives once again. The shift here in EDA is starting to bring some of the state, what is the health of the things that I've deployed, and bubbling it up into these abstractions. At the end of the day, I want to know that my fabric is healthy. And if that means that all my BGP pairs are up, if it means all my routes are exchanged, if it means all my access ports are connected, that's great. That's 100% health for me. But I don't really want to have to go and count all the BGP pairs every time and get an alarm for every BGP pair every time. I really want a platform that can aggregate this information so an operations team can figure out what's wrong and fix it quickly. I think the fundamental difference that AI workloads have from kind of your more typical workloads we would, we would see in a data center is one of uh, almost reliability on the wire. I mean, we're coming from infrastructure that's typically, typically been kind of InfiniBand based or scheduled across the fabric to trying to drive price down using Ethernet and understanding that Ethernet, in theory, introduces unreliability. So uh, I think when we look at how data centers start to evolve, for one, we're seeing new architectures. We're seeing non-blocking architectures start to appear, whereas data centers typically have always managed contention at the various tiers. The other aspect I think that is interesting, especially in the automation space, is one of the tuning of parameters. So, because of how cohesive all of these different components have to work together from the network to the DPU to the GPU to the host, the tuning of all these parameters and the complexity across all the different automation silos is uh, a big part of what we're trying to solve for uh, in EDA. The, uh, the idea that you can just turn on the network, plug a cable in and everything works in the AI uh, context unfortunately isn't a reality. We're having to manage congestion, we're having to manage uh, you know, flow control across that ethernet fabric, and all this goes down to literally the length of cables, which is very different between different environments when you get in the nitty gritty of tuning. So the complexity that we added to that fabric went through the roof. We introduced a ton of new uh, topologies and designs to try and manage loss across the fabric and the degree of cohesion we need between the compute, the DPU, and the network, I think are kind of the unique aspects of why AI workloads, they have a different set of requirements for, for our infrastructure.